Hey guys, Saturday morning at the Kiln Conference is firing day, so I'm down here in the firing place and it is a hive of activity. So let me show you what's going on over here. Uh, there's people from all over that have come down here to make, bring their pottery to get fired and there's a number of firings going on today. I'm doing at least two, but mine don't start till at least 11 o'clock in the morning and it's, I don't know, eight o'clock right now, something like that, so I've got a while. And I'll show you some of the stuff. This is our firewood pile. We went out and collected wood a couple days ago and uh, so we've got a huge pile of firewood. Over here we've got some manure. This is sheep dung that's going to get used to make a fire. There's also some cow manure in some of these bags as well. Uh, over here I think we've got uh, cow pies. And uh, they're just now sending all the people that aren't firing outside to these posts are going to designating the firing area. So those people that aren't firing are going to be sitting out there uh, just, just so people that are firing can move around and, and uh, have some room and so it's safe. Nobody's tripping over a fire or anything like that. Uh, so here they're setting up some other firings. Uh, they've got one here that's done with uh, like, uh, like Tony Soros uh, type of firing with the, with the metal grate and the bricks and they're gonna use charcoal. They've got some commercial kiln furniture that they're using. So that should be interesting. Somebody's gonna do one of those black on black firings. Look, I found Tony. <laughs> somebody's gonna do one of those black on black firings and somebody's gonna do a, a Hopi a sheep manure firing. So they're gonna hopefully get that Hopi blush. Uh, there's pottery and people so all over the place. Now this here is the, uh, is the trench kiln. And they're just getting that ready. They're going to be loading that up pretty soon. And the trench kiln is the one I'm going to show you in this video. They're going to be um, firing. That's the largest firing of the kiln conference. And they've got, I think, something like 100 pots to go in there. So it's a pretty big deal. They've got a whole bunch. I'll show you the pots. So here's the, all the pottery that's going to go into that trench kiln right here. And it's just a wide variety. Uh, we've got some corrugated. We've got some with mineral paint. We've got some with organic paint, but the main thing that the trench firings, the trench kiln firings are for is that organic paint uh, on the smectite clay slip that gives you that beautiful black on white. So it's smothered after it gets really hot and that keeps the oxygen out and that keeps those uh, clays, those white clays from oxidizing. So in, if they're oxidized, those clays will turn kind of a creamy color, a buff color. Uh, but if they're smothered, uh, they'll turn a nice stark white. And those organic paints will turn a nice solid black. The process for firing an Anazazi trench kiln was set forth by a man named Clint Swink. Swink identified four distinct steps to firing a trench kiln. They are primary fire, setting, secondary fire, and smothering. I'll put a link to Swink's book down in the doobly-doo where he talks about this firing process. This is the primary fire. The main purpose of the primary fire is to build a bed of coals over which the pottery will be stacked. Basically I'm just laying out all the wood so we're ready when the time comes to put the second load of wood on. Primary is going to burn down. Pots are going to get set on that on sandstone what, furniture. Um, what are the different stacks of wood we have here? Okay, so this right here is going to be my first row. Ooh. usually refer to them as spanners or lagers. But um, the only thing to keep in mind, they're approximately four inches across um, diameter. And I'm going to run them the short direction of the kiln. And I'm flip-flopping them. I'm putting the butt in on every other one so I know I'm trying to balance my heat because every piece is a little different. This is good, dense, shagged, completely clean wood so it doesn't self-ignite too early. Then this is going to go on top of that. And the splits will go around the outside edge. So that will be our that will be our whole kiln load. But basically I'm laying out the kiln right now before I start setting because I won't have time to think about that after all these pots are in. Understood. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Pots are set around the primary fire to preheat. This drives off any remaining moisture in the clay body and reduces the chance of any breakage during the firing. So I'm 
And I need six handlers. If you handled last night, you're welcome back. I've already invited at least one more. Did you, you, um, Leander, you fed Sandstone, didn't you? So we're not quite ready to set. I just want to have a brief conversation here. So we'll put somebody at all four corners and one in the center. Setters. Each setter needs a handler. Did I? I'll work with who I worked with last night. We've never been this organized, but we've never had this many pots. Okay, just a couple of heads up on it. I am going to apply a, a layer of cold coals because we're, we're yes. in this weird dynamic that we didn't have enough kiln furniture. <laughs> Why are we uh, adding coals? To keep our faces from burning off. Oh, okay. I can see that. <laughs> and we're short on coals in, in there because of trying to clean this up upset. to camp. And then the third thing would be uh, um, these cold pots are pretty cold. Yeah. And so this is going to give them a little chance, these pots. To, right. They're actually going to warm in the kiln is what's going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah, get it right around the edges a little bit. In the setting step, the pottery is placed on stones above the hot coals. Then, Pieces of pottery, known as cover sherds, are placed above the pottery to protect it from coming in contact with the fuel. Yeah, that one can go almost right at, even just right, well, since we've got him, put, yeah, you guys, you want to go fast, but it's okay. It was paleo, not on kick. Then it was just an extension of the basket maker. So I add these up a little straighter and they're turning it up off the ground. Just for anybody that's interested, if you stuck your hand in there right now, you think that kiln is out because it's pretty cold. And the thing is, is that by putting that layer of charcoal, we really buffered that heat. But as soon as this thing goes up, it's going to start sucking air into the side. That's why I don't want these holes filled. And it'll start lifting it, and everything will reignite, and that'll keep the pot on the bottom. So, I mean, this is a big kiln. This is an experiment for for us, but I've just recently started using the charcoal. Not rod. <laughs> Hard kiln, a lot of pots, a lot of pretty faces out there. Oh my so thank you guys. Look at there, Carol. Love to see you. Anyway, I'd love to see you guys <laughs> here with us, sharing this moment. It's a big kiln. We did the best we could. Trust us on that. And I'll turn it over. Bob. Bob, just a minute. We got to get yeah. So after the few years we've been through and, and all of the discord in the country, it's just great to know that you can come together as a community, you can share love, and you can hope for the best that we can get out of this fire. Amen. Love does come All right, light her long, and let's do it.
Pottery painted with organic paint comes out of the kiln covered in a layer of ash. Wipe away that ash and reveal the black designs underneath. Oh my! Oh my. Oh my. It had its butt to the wind, probably maybe had a little moisture in it. I don't think this pot was totally dry. Sometimes we call this water spalling, but basically it's just, you know, snapping off, lam laminating off pieces. Would this pot have made it somewhere else in the kiln? If it had moisture in the wall, no. So, but that's that's a water spalling. Then that's, that's probably either too thick, which means it probably had water in it. Uh, pick up a nice piece of an oxidation. Let me have that one for just a minute. So definitely here is a smoke cloud, right? So a piece of carbon come down on that and it couldn't get any oxygen right here. But this other bright yellow stain, that tells me two things. It tells me one, it got a little oxygen bump right in that end. And I could see all these pots, right, just before yeah. I panicked and then threw a bunch of more wood on, which I normally would never add wood after that initial ignition. But I didn't have a choice at that point. But it also represents temperature reached. If you can get this yellow stain, this I suspect, and I don't even know whose bowl this is, I suspect this bowl will green. So let's talk about that refire stuff. So remember during my talk, I, I showed this as a kind of oxidized, you couldn't really see the design. And so in the refire, of course, we got some really nice carbon because it was already there. Remember I said in the platelets, it locks it in. But when you refire, the pottery gets brittle. And so yeah, it, it cracks. So most of the stuff I have down in my studio are things that uh, end up like this. But I still show them because, you know, the color is pretty nice, I think. Yeah. Okay, watch this when he... Yeah. Uh, so again, remember when we talked about the organics all burn off. So that's what's left, right, is all of the ash that uh, from that organic paint. Here we go. <laughs> so again, pretty good color, um, but that, you know, the paint, I don't know why it does this, Shirley, but sometimes it gets this kind of, I don't know, filmy look over the, yeah. the top of it. So that's too heavy of an application. Uh, oh, but so. no. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this man paint? I mean, his paint's that thick. It'd be great if it, in that, that first kiln we did the other night, uh -huh. when we're trying to stay, we want a heavier ash coverage. But just for the record, this had the same application. <laughs> yeah. But this is, this is uh, Charlene and Tori's paint, and this is my paint. So I suspect there's probably something else going on. Right. Because that is like, more so well, crystal and, clear. And don't forget, his paint is loaded in sulfur. Because we've seen, I've, I've fired his bowls before where the ash is literally, literally bright yellow. Oh my gosh. So if you tie that up with any alkali in the kiln, whether wherever it's coming from, you'll get a crust. I mean, what's the chemical name? I don't know. But you get a crust on them that you can't get off till you hit about 1200 Celsius. So, so calcium and sulfur together are not your friend. Individually, they, they love you. Can I get Jeff in here he's real right quick? There. He's right yeah. there. Him and the students brought these lovely cone packs, um, and he's the only one that knows how to read them right now. So. <laughs> it's a secret code. Yeah. Um, are we talking Celsius or are we avoiding? Please go track? Celsius. Oh, no. Right. We'll, we'll go, go Celsius. Out, well. Thank you. <laughs> so we did, a, we did a range from roughly uh, 875 Celsius to 
to 1060 on the high end. Okay. Wow. Um, so that's that's an 012 to 04 just to pat ourselves out. <laughs> so they were like this. I'm gonna have to keep you guys around. <laughs> and uh, cool we have. There's actually, if you look I, I at these cones, this if I don't break them, oh. drop them on a They're pot. all just standing straight up. <laughs> so that top, that top part, even where that that bowl blew out, um, was not hitting 875. Okay. Down a quarter of the way, you've got um, your 875 down, and then this this second one here. It so this be, second cone really starts to go at 895 morning, Celsius, primary. and it's starting to go. Whoa. So where are we at? So 875. 895. 895. <laughs> this one right here. Yeah. Woo. Right you guys, this is really a big deal because to try to even get near 850, 900 in these kilns Celsius, you that? are working your tail off. You are utilizing, that one and that was the reason for that for the setters and the helpers. That's the reason I was leaving the crib so open so I could jerk that air back in to reignite those poles. The other middle one right down is similar to the other one I showed you. This one down on this end here is kind of fascinating. <laughs> so there's actually the 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 first three cones are. Well, the first two are down. Third one is starting to go, which is at 950. Whoa! So, so we got hotter. It's not yeah. me. Just fall. So, I, so I, I wanted to make a comment about in the third cone pack. It's, I can see from this side, because um, they're lined up, you can see the progression of the cones as they right. go down. But on the third set of cones, um, the one that's down that looked like it was uh, hitting temperature was actually hard shelled, which means that the temperature came up so fast, it hard shells the cone and they snap, they actually break open. Uh -huh. So we had a really quick heat rise right in that, in that, in that third in this.